Hi everyone. In this video, I would like to show you all the factors which are a part of the pricing algorithm of IOCL dynamic pricing system and also explain how these factors make IOCL unique and different from many other revenue management systems across the world. So here you can see the dashboard of the IOCL dynamic pricing system. And for this property, which has three different room categories, you can see how over a period of next 10 days, the room rates are different almost every single day. Now these prices are getting calculated by the IOCL dynamic pricing system and is automatically getting pushed through the channel manager to all the online travel portals. Now in case a hotel does not agree by a certain price, there is an option for hotels to turn off the dynamic price they can see the system recommended rates here and they can always override by whatever rate they would then like to be pushed to all the online channels. Now, what is important to note is that the rates will remain static by with whatever rates have, that have been overridden until the end of the state. And that is why we always request hotels to use this option only in exceptional cases, because only then they will be able to see the actual benefit of an automated dynamic pricing system. Now coming to how these prices are getting calculated, I will take you to where the admin, where the dynamic pricing model is configured. And the first factor is the occupancy based pricing. Now, this hotel is a 39 room property. And when you see the graph on the right hand side, we have the number of rooms on the X axis and the room rates in Indian currency is on the Y axis. And this red line shows how with every room that is being sold online, the price is gradually increasing. And when the hotel reaches a higher occupancy, the increment per room sold becomes steeper as compared to when the hotel is on a lower occupancy. Now this graph can be very different for a leisure hotel. It can be very different for a business property. So really it depends on the type of the hotel, the location of the property. And according to that, this graph can be set up. Now how this factor is different from most revenue management system is that these systems usually use a occupancy based pricing slabs. And how these slabs work is that these systems wait for the hotel to achieve a certain occupancy percentage and only then the rate will jump from bar one to bar two. Similarly, they wait for the next level of occupancy percentage to be reached and then the rate will jump from bar two to bar three. And what is important to note is that while the hotel occupancy is within the first slab, the rate remains constant. IOCL, on the other hand, has a linear pricing algorithm, which means that every room, regardless of the occupancy of the hotel, is sold at a different price, and this is the optimum price for that room at that given time. The next factor which I will show you is the inventory reallocation, which is again very unique to IOCL dynamic pricing system. Now, this is a practice which most hotels do, especially during lean season, where they overbook their base category. And when the guest arrives, the guests are upgraded to the higher categories. Now, the system is doing exactly the same thing in a more systematic manner, where it's allocating a higher percentage of available rooms in the base category and then expecting those guests to be upgraded to the higher categories. Now, if a hotel does not want their premium rooms or their suite to be a part of the inventory reallocation, there is an option to turn off the inventory allocation for the higher categories, and then the inventory reallocation happens only between the first two or three categories. Now, it does not mean that all these available rooms and the base category is sold at the lowest rate, because remember, every room, even if it's the base category, the rate is changing with every room that is being sold online, depending on this graph. So this is the second factor. The third factor, which is the time-based factor. Now, we all know how customers today book mostly on the same day, 
or a day prior. And we can set up time-based triggers. And depending on the occupancy of the hotel, ISL can actually increase or decrease prices. So here, as you can see for the same day bookings, every two hours, the price is reducing by 2% until we reach 6 p.m. where the hotel is okay to give a 10% discount. So when the scale is 0.9, it basically means a 10% discount on the room rates. And the whole idea is to sell off as many unsold inventory for that day. Now, these time-based triggers are not set in stone, so you can set up as many time-based triggers as you would like. And depending on the occupancy of the property, hotels can set up whatever discounts that they would like to sell off as many rooms as they would like for that day. This, again, is one factor which is not seen in many revenue management products across the world. The fourth factor is the lead time day-wise factors. And here is where we define the booking window, which is 365 days, which means that starting today, which is day one, for the next one year, the price will be automatically changing and will be absolutely dynamic. So whenever the hotel picks up, say two months down the line, there is a booking which has been picked up, the price will automatically increase and similarly, if there is a cancellation, the price will automatically decrease. And even in this 365 day window, you can see how again on day one, there is a 10% discount given with the same idea that they would like the unsold inventory to be sold. And as we go further away, the price is gradually increasing. Because if today we are picking up a room for three months down the line, we do not want to pick it up at a very low rate and we do not want to dilute a group booking or a corporate booking that may come on those dates. So this is the fourth factor. And the fifth one is the weekday factors. So this is a business property and you can see how Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the prices have been increased because they see a higher occupancy and the Sunday, which is a lower occupancy day, the price has been reduced by 10%. Now, this will be an absolutely opposite scenario for a leisure hotel where the weekends will be busier and the weekdays will be lean. The next factor is the date-wise season factors. So here we can set up as many seasons as we would like. We can set up lean seasons, we can set up peak seasons, and accordingly increase or decrease the prices. And even in the season, we can always select which day of the week we would like the price to be increased or decreased. So all the permutation combinations are available for hotels to use. The next factor is the month-wise factor. So here, because we do dynamic pricing for the next one year, it is important to highlight which are the peak months, which are the lean months, and which are the shoulder months. And according to that, we can always set up these factors so that here, as you can see, the October rates have been reduced by 15%, and January and February rates are increased by 5% and 10%, because these are the peak months for this hotel. So accordingly, the factors for each of the months can be set up. The next factor is the market demand factor. So ISL takes the feed from booking.com and understands whether the demand into the market and into the overall city is higher than average or lower than average. And according to that, it can increase or decrease the prices. But the overall market demand will include all segments of hotels. So it will have the five stars, it will have independent home days, home stays. And if you would like the rates to be more specific to your type of hotel, you can opt for competition factors. So ISL actually can feed up to your five top competition hotels. And depending on the changes in the rates of your competition hotels, ISL can automatically increase or decrease prices. Now, to explain this better, let me take you to the competition rate shopper, which is our product. And as I mentioned, 
ISL basically can set up up to five of your top competition hotels and you can view your hotel rates in comparison with your competition hotel rates in a graph view like this or in a table view. And then we can set up validations. So these validations, every time they are true, they can actually send you a notification or you can actually have ISL increase or decrease the rates automatically every time these validations are true. Now, let me give you an example. If our hotel rate is less than or greater than, and we can give it an absolute value or a percentage from our competition hotel, we can choose to just get a notification every time this validation is true, or we can have ISL change the rates depending on what the factor we select from here. Now, these validations, whenever it is true, ISL will automatically decrease the prices. And these are the factors which are quantified at the dynamic pricing model here. So while we selected decrease rates, basically ISL will ensure that the price will reduce by 10% if that validation is true. The next and the last factor is the thresholds. So we can define our minimum and the maximum thresholds. We can do it at an overall level or we can do it at individual room category or rate plan level as well. Now, these are thresholds that the system will never violate regardless of whatever these factors uh, calculate. Now, all these factors work in conjunction with each other. So there is no higher weightage given to a single factor. And then they actually push the dynamic rates. So sometimes prices can change 20 to 30 times in a day. And these factors are not set in stone. So every time there is a change in the pricing strategy or the market scenario, one can always go back and tweak each of these factors. And it's not important to change all these factors every single time because there is something called an overall demand scale. So keeping all the factors constant, if we just wouldn't want all the factors to be increased by 20%, all that I have to do is change the scale from 0.65 to 0.85 and submit, and all the factors will increase by 20%. And similarly, we can reduce all the factors by 10, 20%, and we can just change the entire model just by changing one number here. So that is how the ISL pricing algorithm works. I hope you find the video useful. Thank you and have a nice day.